when he said, blessed are the poor. What if it's true that God sent him to preach good news, mostly to poor people, to announce the release of prisoners? We're all prisoners of some kind. Every one of us. Don't fool yourself. Something has a hold on you. Figure out what it is, and you can be free of it. Yes? What if Jesus actually comes to liberate the oppressed? Have you ever felt oppressed? Yes, we all have. We've all felt oppressed in our lives. So we're included in some of these statements. What if all the ways that we spin those words so they don't disrupt our little comfortable lives? What if that's just wrong? You know, I hate to admit it, but sometimes I'm wrong. <laughs> that's my fear this year. Maybe that's the fear of all the years that I've had in my life. And if I sit with that fear for just a little bit, I realize that what I'm really afraid of is being on the outside of that big circle that God is drawing that includes everyone, all people. I'm a little afraid that I'm living outside the values of that circle that God has drawn. Maybe I'm not quite who I should be, perhaps. That the comfort of my life, a comfort that I really enjoy and I don't want to give up, is a compromise that I've constructed. It's a fence that keeps me outside the margins of the story of Jesus. Outside of the ways of God turning the world upside down. Outside of the revolution that's going on. I don't want to be outside. This is a story that I love, and I very much want to be inside. I want to be one of the, the in crowd. I want to be one of the cool kids. You know, I want to be there, Jesus, with you. I want to think that I belong there with you. You know, I can't help but remember this, another story from the scripture where a young man who had most everything he could possibly want in the world came to Jesus, and he said, Jesus, I've got everything I need, but something's missing in my life. Something is missing in my life. What do I have to do to draw near to God? And Jesus said, well, you know the answer to that. You obey the laws. You obey the commandments you've been given. You love God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength, right? And then the young man said, well, I do that. Jesus said, well, that's really nice, but there's something else you can do. Give up everything you own. Give the money to the poor. Strip yourself down to just you. Let go of all that stuff. How many of you have stuff? Yeah, we all have stuff. Stuff in our lives that just hangs on us and you can't go anywhere because you've got this stuff hanging on you all the time, right? Absolutely. So who are you without your job title, without your good address, without all your stuff? You're still a beloved child of God. You are still the one that Jesus hunts down to have a relationship with you. Yes. So Jesus says, come find yourself in a bigger story. And that's what he was telling this young rich ruler. Come find yourself in a bigger story, son. Something without your palace and without your servants and without whatever it is you've got. I think maybe you know how the story ends. The man couldn't do what Jesus asked him to do. He couldn't give up his stuff. I just I can't give it up, Jesus. It's who I am. I'm nobody without these things in my life. And with sadness, the Bible says he went away. Jesus was saddened by that as well. He had so much that he couldn't give away. Yet here's Mary. Her story's not quite that explicit, but God came to her and said, Mary, I need you to give up everything and trust me in this. Trust me. Mary had no idea what that yes was going to lead to. She had no idea the pain it was going to bring into her life. She had no idea the joy it was going to bring into her life either. I noticed that the verbs in the song that Mary sang are all in the past tense as well. It says, God has shown strength. God has scattered the proud. God has lifted up the lowly. These weren't predictions about something that was going to happen in the future. And Mary wasn't being asked to do these things. She was being invited into a story bigger than herself. A story that God started writing before the world began. You and I are invited into that same story. 
It's bigger than us. It's bigger than any of us. But this story has been going on since before the world was created. God has a plan. And you and I are only in this much of it. Think about that. We are just such a small part of that plan. Oh, but what an important part we are. Because we are God's chosen children. We are the ones God chased down. We are the ones Jesus was born for. We are the ones he gave his life for. You and I, we're a big part in our little part. Yes. With her yes, Mary was stepping out into a story bigger than her own. She was excited. She was afraid. She was all the things that you and I are at times in our lives. The question to me and to you is whether we want to be a part of that same story. I'm not sure I can give up everything, enjoying that revolution that Mary started. Even if it makes me a little bit afraid, I wonder if it would be okay right now if I just kind of lean into it a little bit. If I'm not quite ready to give it all up, at least I'll lean into that story a little bit. Surrender a little bit. If I surrender just a little bit, God wants all. Amen. God wants it all. God doesn't want just a little bit. God wants it all. Mary gave everything. She gave into it. She didn't fight against it. But that revolution is stirring inside of me, and I hope it's stirring inside of you too. Because we're a part of something. Something huge. Something magnificent. We are part of telling the world that God loves all people. Not just people who look and act the same. Not just people who go to the big giant churches and believe those dogmas and those doctrines and those creeds. God loves us right here at Cornerstone. And God loves all the people out there in the world that are like us. Yes. Amen? Amen. Amen. In that story I talked about a few minutes ago about the man who couldn't follow Jesus, there's one little place in it that really catches my attention. It says in there that Jesus looked at him carefully and loved him. Jesus knew he wasn't ready to give it up, but Jesus loved him anyway. Jesus loves you and me in spite of the fact that we sometimes don't want to give it up. Sometimes we don't want to surrender. We don't want to give up the things that hold us back. But no matter, Jesus loves us without limit, unconditionally, just as we are. You know, this is a scene that makes my song of hope for the day, that Jesus does love us in spite of who we are and in spite of our reluctance to give up, to swim with the riptide. Come on now. Get into the water with me. Let's just swim along with this riptide, with this revolution that we've been invited to. There's a song that's sung at Christmas that says, What can I give him, poor as I am? If I were a shepherd, I'd give him a lamb. If I were a wise man, I would do my part. Yet what can I give him? I can give him my heart. I invite you, give your heart to Jesus this Christmas. Join the revolution. Amen. Many moonlit 
blessed throughout this year. Yes. Yeah. 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 Dig deep and thank you. Ushers?
We remember his death at the hands of the oppressors. We remember his victory over sin, death, and earthly powers. It is you, O oh God, who invites us to this table, not just to remember, but to partake of your presence. And yet, it is not just here where we find you in communion with us. As we share this meal together, enlighten us to the many ways you are active in this world, in the world you have created, and to the ways we may serve you there. Yes. All together, bless, bless this bread and, and this fruit of the vine, that we may see and experience you anew. And by that same new awareness, energize us to witness to your presence in all times and places. Amen. Through the broken bread, our eyes are open. Christ, Christ is with us. us. Through the cup of blessing, our hearts are warmed. Christ, Christ is changing us. us. Let us pray the prayer that Jesus taught us, saying, Our Creator, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy dominion come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the dominion, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The gift is ours to share. Please come as the ushers direct. At MCCs across the world, we practice an open communion table. That means you don't have to be a member of this church. You don't have to be a member of any church at all. Because this is God's table. And it is welcoming to you.
me in our prayer of thanksgiving. We thank you, God, for your wisdom and love that came to us in Jesus, the Word made flesh. Having feasted together at this table, may we be more mindful of the many ways you are sharing yourself with us. By the same awareness, may our relationship with you and with one another grow deeper and may your kingdom of peace and justice expand. In the name of the one for whom we wait, amen. Amen. I just want to say a special thank you to our young people, James and Erica. You blessed us this morning, young people. Thank you. He's had a good time in the house of God today. Christmas cards back there this morning, so be sure to check it, and then don't forget we've got the bread and pastries over in the fellowship house today. Thank <laughs> you. 